Why, hello there, Errol the Comic Chief here, and uh, today we will be reviewing Brian Michael Bendis' Action Comics number 1002. Whosoever watches this channel, if he or she be worthy, shall acquire the knowledge from the Comic Chief. The cover art, it was drawn by Gleason and Sanchez, and I'm absolutely loving it. It's got that classic Superman feel, but to me, some Superman the Animated Series vibes. I really like it. Okay, so on to the review. The art was great. I love it. It was great. And the writing and dialogue were also fabulous. I thought the best parts were with Perry White because it shows how much he believes not only in Superman, but in the city. You get this vibe that Metropolis really is opposite to Gotham. As in, even with everything going on, it is a city of light. It's a beacon of hope. I don't know why, but that was my favorite writing of this book. The plot was cool, so we got some red cloud action and the mysteries of where Lois and John were touched on a little bit. Uh, the character development was stellar for Superman. I really enjoyed seeing some ensemble characters get the spotlight in this uh, for once. Superman was barely in the book and we got more Clark Kent undercover work, which is something I really like about classic Superman. We also advanced some other characters we were introduced to in Man of Steel, such as Robinson Good. Oh, and Lois Lane, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Uh, character development was great because of Perry White alone. I don't know about you, but I really like this issue. Oh, did you know that this action has a digital code? So five out of five, straight up. There are action comic haters out there, I know, so let me know in the comment section below if you disagree or agree. I just wanted to give a quick shout out and thank you to Discovery Bay Comics. He has been killing it and I think a lot of the comic book community owes it to him for their views. So please head over to JB's channel, give him a like, share, and sub, and uh, do that for me too. Okay, on to the review. This issue is titled Invisible Mafia Part 2. The title page has some cool easter eggs on post-it notes on the computer screen and desk. We get some in-universe and out-of-universe mentions such as Batman's Wedding, and we also get some Jim Lee called action. I like it. We begin the story in Metropolis where we get a throwback to classic, it's a bird, it's a plane action, and we see what we think is Superman about to come down, but it was actually a dead body, a gangster's body that was dropped. Uh, the next page, we have Perry White scolding Robinson Good for her would-be article of Superman dropping a gangster to his death. She says that witnesses testify that it was Superman, but Perry White mentions that Superman was in Coast City with the Justice League. So I love the fact that Perry White actually does some editing at his paper and doesn't take crap for stories and just publish them. He scolds Robinson and tells her to get proof and that she needs to be a better reporter. Wow, Perry Water, uh, White really is the opposite of J. Jonah James Jameson from Spider-Man. Uh, I don't know why I always compare them. Uh, I like this guy. So the gangster's name was Yogurt, and while Perry tells Robinson to do more digging, he also tells Clark Kent to do his own investigation, pretty much undermining Robinson Good. Robinson Good is sitting at her desk. Clark uh, turns to look at her as if he feels bad for undermining her, and she storms out angrily. We cut to the mafia member named Mo Moxie in his limousine entering a parking garage speaking on a phone to the man behind the computer screens that we saw in issue number 1001 saying that he is waiting for full confirmation. They are tracking Superman's every move and reporting that he is moving toward the Hall of Justice. He's interrupted. Moxie's interrupted and his limousine is being pummeled with him inside rolling around getting tossed around. Wear your seatbelt. I thought it was a red cloud again, but when we turn the page, it's actually the vigilante guardian. He came to punish Moxie for throwing yogurt off the building in front of kids. As he is about to kill Moxie, the red cloud interrupts. The next page is my favorite art in the book. The red cloud is drawn so well, it looks like a piece of art that I should have on my wall. She's standing um, or swirling around rather over Guardian and Moxie. We transition to Metropolis General Hospital and Captain Maggie Sawyer of Metropolis Crimes uh, pays Guardian a visit. We come to find out that Moxie's dead, and that whatever put Guardian in the hospital also killed Moxie. As Guardian is barely waking up, he says the Red Cloud's name, giving the captain a clue t as to who did this. Next we find Clark Kent invest uh, investigating Yogurt in a bar. I love the writing in these pages because we have a bunch of drugs, drunks mourning the loss of their gang member Yogurt. Clark is trying to blend in with the crowd. He accidentally makes a joke asking if somebody died, and I thought he was going to get beat up by a man named Scott. But when Clark tells him he also lost someone, Scott goes to tears and gives him a big ol' hug. I thought it was kinda cool. Immediately, Clark Kent was in with the gang and got the inside scoop. Scope. Scoop. 
so we get panels that are intertwined uh, with Clark doing that, and Perry White was uh, at the Daily Planet. Uh, in a nutshell, Yogurt was dead because he was punished for setting the arson fires as a decoy or excuse to blame th and throw Superman off his game to commit their own petty crimes. Mid conversation, Clark ends up flying um, off as Superman to save Earth from an asteroid. Uh, so, yeah, I, I really liked it. Um, this is actually really good stuff, Bendis. So, moving back to the Daily Planet, Clark is sitting at his computer and we get a nice guest appearance from Cat Grant. This actually makes me want to catch up on some Supergirl episodes. So nonchalantly, this plot device actually makes a way for Clark to find out that Lois just published a new book. At the end of 1001, we saw Lois at the Drake Hotel writing. This confirms that either A, Clark didn't know she was around, or B, Clark and Lois aren't together, so he doesn't know what she's doing in her life. The next two pages show us one of those plot twists. Well, it was kind of obvious, but now confirmed. Robinson Good is not a good person. She is at a bar having drinks with the mafia leader, Mr. Strong. She confirms she has been feeding Perry White false stories at the Daily Planet. Thank goodness Perry wasn't born yesterday. Robinson is on some uh, end game with Mr. Strong and the Red Cloud. During the conversation, Robinson asked for a piece of kryptonite. The Red Cloud was in on the plan and was going to get her what she wanted. Does Robinson know what, that Clark is Superman? So the very last page of the book, we see a blonde woman with a bag of food. She is interrupted by none other than Superman. He asks her if she's Lois. She takes off her wig and responds with, hi honey. What the heck? Cliffhanger alert. So what do you think, YouTube? Better than the first issue for sure. That's all I've got. Do you have anything for me? If not, you know, Put it in the comment section below or don't. This is the Comic Chief going offline.